So for testing purposes, you might want to remember that the uh, white long grain rice is prepared 2 to 1, 2 parts water to 1 part rice by volume. Most dry beans need to be soaked in water before cooking. Soaking softens and rehydrates the bean, which reduces the cooking time. After soaking, beans are most often simmered or baked in a liquid until soft and tender. When you're planning a buffet, the first thing you have to do is identify the theme. The theme sets the tone for the event. Uh, obviously, the menu is going to be based on the theme, so if you have a Hawaiian theme, you're going to have uh, Hawaiian menu items and also uh, Hawaiian decorations, and it has to do with the price also. Uh, some types of meals, like an Italian meal, would tend to be less expensive probably than a French meal. It's important to offer dishes consistent with the theme, so even though their kid likes hot dogs, you probably don't want to offer hot dogs on a Hawaiian themed menu. Which table is used for setting up a snake-like buffet? That would be a serpentine table. Technique to serve large groups efficiently is by using a double-sided buffet. Uh, don't forget, when you have a double-sided buffet, to be double-sided it has to have uh, tongs and appropriate serving equipment on both sides. A lot of times you'll go to a buffet and uh, you're waiting for the person across from you to finish with a spoon, so that isn't really a double-sided buffet. A common problem when planning a buffet is overproduction. They make too much. As a rule of thumb, use one pound of food per person as a starting point, and then you can adjust that number depending on factors such as the composition of the group, uh, the number of items offered. So obviously you don't have to, if you get 10 items there, everybody's not going to eat one. So you figure that out. And are they uh, young kids? Are they older people, uh, ethnic uh, type people? So use that to uh, adjust, but in general, a pound of food per person. Also keep in mind the structure of the event, whether it will be convenient for people to return to the buffet for seconds, and whether diners serve themselves or are served uh, by waitstaff or chefs at the buffet. Choose the plate. Consider the sizes and shapes, colors, patterns. Most plates are round, but oval plates, rectangular, square, triangular plates are becoming more common. If you go to the uh, food shows these days, there's an amazing assortment of uh, beautiful types of plates. Usually they tend to be kind of small where the food goes, uh, which is good. Fancy plates, small foods, good profits. They vary in size between 4-inch bread plates to huge 14-inch chargers, or a base plate. What's a charger? That's what goes under the plate so you would put a plate on top of the charger. Plates should be composed to make the food appetizing. Just strive for a well-balanced plate uh, composition that can be achieved with careful consideration of the shape, the colors, the textures, the arrangement of the food on the plate. Remember the customers consume first with their eyes, so pay attention to that. Don't just slap the food on the plate. Uh, do a plate before you start uh, plating up all the meals and uh, so that people can have a sense, that your chefs can have a sense of what it's supposed to look like. Make it look pretty. Balance between overcrowding the plate and leaving large gaps of space. Choose a focal point, which is typically the highest point on the plate or the, the part that's closest to your eyes, and build around that. Make sure to cook the food properly to ensure the best visual presentation. The best uh, way to make a meal look good is to cook it properly as far as done as brown as etc. Always inspect the plate or a pan before it leaves the kitchen. Make sure it's not sloppy looking. Make sure you don't have like giant chunks of meat that people look at and it turns them off. So make sure it looks good. Colors, textures, shapes, and arrangements of foods on a plate can be improved or highlighted by decorating a plate with herbs, greens, spices, 
and other garnishes. The biggest objection to garnishing is when it overwhelms the food on the plate. It should enhance the appearance of the plate. It shouldn't be the appearance of the plate. You may be uh, using other temperatures depending on uh, where you work, what uh, area you're in, but uh, you should know that the official uh, danger zone is 41 to 135, meaning all the big tests and the uh, food code say 41 to 135. Harmful bacteria are most likely to be found growing rapidly in a hamburger patty. Why is that? Remember you have to cook them to 155 because you're mushing all the food and the bacteria around and so uh, that's going to get warmer faster and uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for cross-contamination in a burger as compared to the rest of the items there. Make sure that all work surfaces, cutting boards, knives, hands, and other equipment used to prepare food products are clean and sanitary. One method is to immerse the item in 171 degree water for 30 seconds. That would be where the water is providing the sanitizer, not any chemical. So 171 degrees for the sanitizer uh, for water in this sanitizing tank of a three compartment sink. Cooked food should never be placed in containers that were used to hold the raw product. You always put them in fresh, clean containers. Smoking by a food handler is likely to contaminate the food mainly from the saliva carried from the mouth to the fingers, so cross-contamination. Smoking also poses an extreme health risk to the food handler, of course, but our concern with uh, is food safety, and uh, therefore if you take a break to go have a smoke, then you need to wash your hands properly before you come back to work. The best method to defrost frozen food is to gradually thaw it under refrigeration. So, th thought about it ahead of time and you defrost it in the refrigerator. Avoid using water to thaw. If you do, you know it has to be cool running water. And avoid allowing product to thaw at room temperature. Always store frozen fish at zero degrees Fahrenheit or below. Always wrap fish to prevent freezer burn. And always store no more than two months for fatty fish or six months for lean fish. This is for frozen. Most ben uh, vegetables benefit from cold storage at temperatures between 34 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Storing at colder temperatures can convert the starches in these vegetables to sugars, thus changing the texture and flavor, so you don't want to do that. You don't want to be too cold. Some fresh vegetables are best stored at cool temperatures between 40 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit, ideally in a separate produce refrigerator because of their smell. Those would be things like winter squash, potatoes, onions, shallots, and garlic. Just the slightest little bit of uh, HACCP information to introduce you to the term hazard analysis, critical control points. Of course, we have a uh, certification for that, which is one of the really important ones. Key element of a uh, food safety management system is HACCP, which is all about ensuring that you're delivering safe food to your customers. So the purpose of having HACCP, why would you do it, would be to ensure that you're delivering safe food to your customers, and HACCP has to do with uh, following the food all the way from the farmer or the manufacturer up through the distributor and up to service to the customer. HACCP is concerned with controlling food and beverage hazards at all stages of the food chain. Now these abbreviations are pretty straightforward and pretty much everybody knows them but we're going over them because not everybody knows them. Uh, which reminds me to say it's important on everything, uh, whether it's um, specials on the menu or, or the way waitstaff orders, 
a lot of times orders get messed up because the chef doesn't know what the wait staff means by those initials or they can't read them so you need to make sure that everybody understands and is using all the same abbreviations so pound of course is LB tablespoon TBSP or sometimes with a capital T teaspoon TSP ounce is OZ cup is a C quart is of course QT and gallon is GAL just the smallest little bit few slides of restaurant math to uh, remind you that uh, as important as cooking good is being able to do the math being able to make money uh, not overproduce etc so you need to make sure you can do that so one case of breaded chicken portions contains 20 pieces serving size is two pieces you're serving 80 customers how many cases should you order that would be eight cases how did we figure that out well you have 80 customers each one's getting two pieces that's 160 pieces 160 pieces divided by the 20 pieces per case equals 8 cases. Easy for you. You're serving 7 ounce portions of prime rib to 150 customers. How many pounds do you need to prepare? sixty six pounds. How did we come up with sixty six pounds? Took hundred and fifty customers times seven ounce portions is a thousand and fifty divided by sixteen. What's sixteen? Sixteen ounces in a pound equals sixty five point six pounds, which rounds to sixty six. So sixty six pounds as purchased. Are they going to get seven ounces? No, they're going to get less than seven. Seven is as purchased. They're going to wind up with probably five or six. And this question is why I said on the last question that they're going to end up with uh, five or six ounces a piece uh, because the as purchased is before the fat and the, and the trim and the shrinkage and the EP is after. So if the prime rib as purchased is 22 pounds an edible portion what's left after cooking and trimming is 19 pounds the yield percentage is what that would be 86 percent so 86 percent of what you started with is what you ended up with where did the other 14 percent go it went down the drain in the garbage can you trimmed uh, and the meat shrunk as you cooked it. So very simply you divide the little number by the big number. If you're looking for a percentage you always divide the little number by the big number. So the little number is 19, the big number is 22. 19 divided by 22 is 86 percent. So if you bought a hundred pounds of prime rib you wound up with 86 pounds. Which of the following would be the most useful for measuring out two pounds of sugar? That would be a balance beam scale. That's it, we're done. Thanks for taking the course. Any questions before you test, send me a note or give me a call. What you're going to do now is you're going to go to the Global Food Service Institute Certification Examination for Certified uh, Culinary Professional, and uh, you'll pay. That's uh, hosted by NECB, so you're going to follow the uh, prompts that I'll be giving you to uh, get to that site and take the test. Good luck. Any questions, be sure to give me a call before you take the test. Thanks a lot. Bye.